The three men now on board the International Space Station started this flight with more than a year and a half of spaceflight experience among them, even though one is a first-time flyer and another had spent three weeks on orbit. U.S. Navy Captain Scott Kelly was born in Orange, New Jersey, a year before the first Gemini mission. As a boy growing up in nearby West Orange, he remembered the first moon landing. But being an astronaut wasn't exactly high on his agenda. When I was a kid, I was interested in being an astronaut, like a lot of kids are interested in being an astronaut because it seems like an exciting job. You know, I was also interested in playing baseball for the Mets and, you know, race car driver. Um, and other more realistic things, I think, as I, I got older. The realistic occupation that eventually grabbed Kelly's attention was flying for the military, and not just any old fighter pilot job would do. Uh, I chose the Navy over the Air Force because I thought landing on the ship would be harder than and more challenging than landing on a runway, and I was right. So he joined the Naval ROTC at the State University of New York Maritime College, and earned a Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering. After pilot training and a few years of overseas deployment in a fighter squadron, Kelly was selected for the Navy Test Pilot School and then earned a Master's in Aviation Systems from the University of Tennessee in 1996, the same year he was selected as an astronaut, in the same class with his twin brother, Mark. Kelly was the pilot on the 1999 Hubble Space Telescope servicing mission commanded the 2007 shuttle flight that delivered the International Space Station's S-5 truss segment and sees this flight as the next challenge. Basically, we fly in space to see if we can fly in space longer, and if we want to venture away from our planet, we need to know how to do that. But then there's also the, you know, the medical research we can do on board, the material science, uh, the, you know, other uh, types of uh, basic science that are equally, in my opinion, important. Flight engineer Alexander Kaleri is one of the most experienced space travelers in history and should finish this flight ranked second for the most time spent on orbit. He was born and raised in Yermala, a seaside town near the capital of Latvia. And Yuri Gagarin's spaceflight is the only one he doesn't remember. In August of 1961, then German Titov flew. It was the second flight, a one-day flight on board Vostok 2, so I can remember this flight very well. And I was five. And I can say that uh, then I was uh, seven or eight, I have no doubts then I'll be a cosmonaut. Kaleri was influenced by his father, a navigator and paratrooper who became an engineer in civilian life and counseled his son that it might be more interesting to design spacecraft and fly them rather than just be a pilot. At the end of high school, I uh, looked through the list of uh, institutes in the Soviet Union. It was a thick book. And I saw uh, one institute in Moscow, Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology, and one of the depart of departments was called Department of Aerophysics and Space Research. And I thought, oh, it's for me. Kaleri finished his degree at the Institute on a project with the Koryolov Design Bureau, the forerunner of the spacecraft designer now known as the Rocket Space Corporation Energia. He went to work for Energia right out of college, developing design and test documentation for the Mir space station, and was selected as a cosmonaut of Energia in 1984. He made his first trip to space as flight engineer on Mir 11. During Mir 22, he was a crewmate to three American astronauts during the shuttle Mir program and was on board to fight the fire on that station in February 1997. Kaleri was on the Mir 28 crew that prepared the Russian station for deorbiting and was flight engineer on the International Space Station's Expedition 8 crew in 2003 and 2004, compiling 610 days on orbit on those four space flights. Why does he do what he does? How to explain the necessity of uh, going behind the horizon. It's very human quality. So it's uh, maybe most valuable uh, frontier from human for humankind. Space flights and going uh, into space and to the low Earth orbit and into the deep space. Here we go. 
Flight engineer Oleg Skripochka was born in the city of Nevinomysk in the Stavropol region in the North Caucasus. His father's military career meant moves to many locations, including Russia's far eastern Kamchatka Peninsula, before finally settling in the city of Zaporozhye in southeastern Ukraine. As a young boy, Skripochka wanted to be an officer like his father. Then my plans changed. And then probably in the ninth grade, I was about 15 years old, I happened to hear from a classmate that uh, we do have an organization that prepares future cosmonauts. Skripochka talked his way into this young cosmonaut school, where lessons in skydiving and scuba were just a part of the curriculum. I took classes uh, on cosmonautics, on the hardware and technologies that is used in space, also just a general philosophical issue such as why we're doing this and where we want to go from here. When he traveled to Moscow as part of the school's team for the Koyolov reading competition, he was introduced to the Bauman Moscow State Technical University and cemented his choice of college. Skripochka earned his degree in mechanical engineering at Bauman while working at RSC Energia as a metal worker and technician. He became a design engineer after graduation and was selected as an Energia cosmonaut in 1997. So I think that it's just an inherent nature of a human being to expand to research. Earth is the cradle of our civilization, but it is possible right now it's not the best time for us, but I think it's temporary and we will move forward and move beyond our planet and continue developing our civilization.